I know Mojo may know about TRAs, but he has no experience with P drive kind of weights. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. How about you? I'm Joe. And today, apparently, since I may know something or a little bit about TRA clutches, well, let's uh, touch a little on these TRA clutches first. Doo -doo. So I figure since this is a ramp and the P drive clutch has a ramp and since the ramp controls the shift force and or does it? <laughs> In. Oh, let's see, ramps, do, 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 do. Oh, there's no ramps in here, but there is shift curves. All right, page 29, curvature. Cam curvatures can be modified to give different engagement speeds, more aggressive shift, shift out over revving, and smooth or aggressive shift out patterns. Mm, some of you might recognize this page right here out of Ian's book. So not my words, if Mr. Ian says that the cam curvatures can be modified to give different blah blah blah, then let's have a look at them and see what they do. And would it even matter if it's this or this? Put phone on airplane mode when recording. <laughs> okay, so Mr. Ian kept using this word Aggressive and aggressive I see over the years has one set of facts from one guy He thinks aggressive is these facts and over here Aggressive to another guy is a different set of facts getting to read a whole bunch of SAE papers on belts and and a couple other books on CVTs You start to put together pieces out of them what they say aggressive is uh, from failures because something was too aggressive or a failure from something being not aggressive enough, creating a lot of heat. So kind of put together a compilation, all those facts to be able to come up with a definition or my definition, say of aggressive and you don't have to accept it or not, but that's how I'm gonna say what aggressive is. So I took this little excerpt out of my tuning handbook that I've been writing for years. <laughs> Aggressive, chapter 45, definitions. Uh, three, many times I see confusion regarding the word aggressive when it comes to clutching. People relate this word when they talk of how the clutches shift. The clutch uses more of the meat of the torque curve from the engine, shifting harder with lower RPMs. So that's like previously when I was talking about a ramp with a lower profile, say, just as one example, has lower engine speed at part throttle than one that's higher in the clutch. That's my, my thing on aggressive. When you quickly press the throttle, the engine is not revvy. That's less engine speed at part throttle, more aggressive. The sled responds with greater movement from your throttle position. You alter the feeling of the sled with greater action in the bottom end of the mid-range when pressing the throttle. So one end of the scale over here, be like a 440, it winds up at 5,000 RPM and you press the throttle and the sled starts to move out and it's going 5, 6, 6,500 and then it starts to pull, right? And you're still part throttle, but you're pulling the sled away, say going down the driveway or going down some hard pack before you do whatever you're gonna do to full throttle. And then we'll go over to this end here of the spectrum on aggressiveness is say a 900 ace, 600 ace expedition or a Tundra Extreme 600 that has 2700 engagement. You can almost just on the throttle and the sled moves, it engages right away and you push the throttle. Some guys will say that it's so aggressive, too aggressive for them because they'll press the throttle and the engine will, say it runs at 8,000, but the engine will go to 7,500 full throttle and hang there and then uh, slowly climb to 8,000 RPM. That's too aggressive. Go over here, the opposite, least aggressive would be say, the engine runs at 8,000 and uh, pin the throttle and the 
attack goes to like 8200 and then comes back to 8 or it goes to 8400 and then comes back to 8000 rpm that's not aggressive it's not shifting hard enough more aggressive is using more of the meat of the engine like of the torque curve of the engine so one sentence on aggressive could be saying the clutch exerts more forceful energy using less rpm there that's my definition of aggressive <laughs> aggressive <laughs> as long as it is <sighs> Okay, now we're gonna start looking at some ramps here. Okay, so what I did was write out Mr. Ian's points so they're not my points, and let's have a look at them. Cam curvatures can be modified to give different engagement speeds, more aggressive shift out or less aggressive shift out, shift out over revving, smooth or aggressive shift out pattern. Not my words, his words. <laughs> so now we're going to take a close-up look at the ramps and look at say three of the most common ramps the 415 the 413 and the 414 the 415 from uh summit they were used in summits from 2003 to 2007 uh the 413 ramp you see them more in uh, 08 to 2017 low elevation setups for summits or backcountry. The 414 has been the old 800 trail ramp since 2003 right to the 800 being ended in 17 for the trail sleds. So we'll have a look at those three ramps. They've been the most popular ramps of all time with Skidoo, I would say my opinion. And let's have a look at the difference between all of them. As far as far as different engagement speeds, more aggressive shift out, less aggressive shift out. They had a lamentation of the women. TRA ramps. And here we have the 415, the 413, and the really aggressive 414. Want to see them a little closer? There's got to be a scarier part to that movie than that, kids. Uh, <laughs> so this... <laughs> so the 415 is the least aggressive. The 413 is in between aggressive. The 414 is the trail ramp. And we'll take a little bit closer camera shot. But first, we're going to have a little teaser here on the P-Drive ramps. So here's a jig I made last year. It holds 17 ramps. I could do them all side by side and I can check the height of them to see the relationship of each one is actually as if it's in the clutch. And I got a machine shop to help me out and some, <laughs> some machinist there used the smarty, the smart smarts. And he helped me solve the problem on how I can measure all these ramps by coming up with this ramp grinding block. And it's kind of taken after Dale's ramp grinding block, like the Dalton one here. So basically we kind of looked at the ramps and then just expanded it, right? As far as being able to fit this. So now I can, I'll just show you a preliminary check here. I could check the height of every ramp to see that they're all the same. And everything's all tight, just like in the clutch. And I can go through and I can check each one. Here's a 984 turbo ramp from the 2020 and a half 850. Uh, I think this one here is a 968, a trail ramp. And uh, this is a 965 ramp. So look at the profile, how different they are. And then over here is that 600 RS. Here's the roller from a P drive. Here we go. Right, it's taken out of a old beat up P drive I got from the race department. Thank you very much. <laughs> There's where it would sit, say in the clutch for the 600 RS, and kind of right about here for the 850, say right here for this ramp. Most of these ramps have been used in a clutch. And <laughs> just think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can stack another seven over here and then go around with my gauge and make sure all the heights are correct analyze each ramp remember this right here this is zero engagement 
the start of the shift and this is the end of the shift so say here is zero miles an hour and here could be about 40 miles an hour 50 miles an hour and this is 100 so say this is geared for 100 miles an hour zero mile an hour 100 zero miles an hour this is summit so let's go say 60 miles an hour zero miles an hour 30 ish thereabouts 40 50 60 right say this is a trail sled geared for 120 miles an hour full shift overdrive zero miles an hour 60 miles an hour 120 miles an hour so say somewhere say somewhere right here it would be like as if there's one to one clutch ratio and then this last bit here this here would be that last seven eighths of an inch on your primary clutch now we're going to get to this here and expand on this a bit and what we learn here is going to transmit over to here because all it is is a curve right it's just a curve okay well i think that's enough for today it took an hour to set this nice vista of ramps up <laughs> oh, uh oh oh one's x-rated here oh let's see here We'll just blot that out there. <laughs> and this coffee brew is turned into coffee spew. So, yeah, I'm going to go home and have a cold brew. And uh, let's see here. Well, if you like the video, then uh, give it a mint, right? <laughs> and remember, if you go riding, don't forget to check the air pressure in your track. Right on. Okay, see you next video. Ha <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>